what can we do to make the goat and sheep industry more viable? I'm a firm believer that the world needs goats and sheep. There's a lot of talk about climate change, and carbon sequestration, and by golly, this land needs the sheep and goats run properly on the land with the cattle and the wildlife. Uh, excuse me for getting off the subject, but I think it all goes together. And I thank those of you that have taken the time to come today to network and visit and learn and support our industry that we need to think in the bigger, bigger picture. And I'm convinced that it's never going to go back to the big North American textile industry. It's going to be those of us that still continue to raise the goats and then add value. And there's, the first step in adding value is the classification. Classification. Other than temperament and staple length, in any fiber is micron. And doctor, I neglected to get in touch with Dr. Lupton, and then I've lost a sample that I carried around for years, showing the different percentages of of yield in the micron. But just basically, let me tell you how you tell uh, fiber diameter. I hope we got some cash door back there. If you can't see it very easy, it's real fine. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mary? It changes as you get older. <laughs> 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 that standard is moving. Right? <laughs> Let's just say micron is going to be 12. And I don't know what I ever had any, but, but uh, there is there is some. But let, let's just go on up to 19.5 microns. So, when you leave here today, you're not going to know the microns. And I've had cataract surgery last year, and I sure can't see as good. But it's all relative. All of you can wear a long sleeve, black or dark blue uh, sleeve. And when you're out at the barn, the pens, and you're going to compare fiber, that's where you learn about fiber, diameter, and, and style. It's back there in the barn, <laughs> comparing. So, we'll look at enough, hopefully, that you can feel comfortable. And we don't have to know those microns. Just say fine, medium, and coarse. So length. This is being repetitious, but we'll get on the fleeces. And there's some that's longer than three inches, but I don't want you leaving here today thinking you're going to raise a lot of cashmere <laughs> that's over two inches. In other words, some people have too big of, they get excited about their short fiber, or they think mine's not long enough. But that inch and a quarter to three inches, man, you can make lots of wonderful, wonderful products. When you get over that two and a half to three inches, the first thing you want to automatically think about is, is this cash gore? Is it too coarse? Length is important. All right, then yield. Nina can maybe help us on this more, but she is, and it's interesting, we had not talked, but as you heard there, our figures were pretty much the same, that, that 17 to 25 percent, and if it's got that extra long guard hair, it won't pay to do it, but it'll be down to 8 to 12 percent, 8 to 12 percent. I guarantee you. 20, 25% is a good yield. Now, if you're coning it off, that's, that's, that's a little different. I wish Diane Thompson could be here. 
I've never met Diane. But I always write comments on the fleeces. And, and when you're judging, you don't know who it is. And then it's always exciting. Everybody wants to see who won, but to open those up and, and see. I remember being in Virginia, and that's, I think that's where I first judged some of Diane's fleeces. And then Mickey Nelson, Nelson from Washington. Uh, you could tell those people were taking pride in, in the preparation, the combing, and, and not sending trash in for competition. Have you heard of tertiary fibers? I can't even spell it, but, but anyway, you know, we got the big old guard hair. And then we got down underneath there the little cashmere. Then you're going to, when you really start looking at this stuff, there's some that, that's the tertiary fiber, just a, it's not guard hair and it's not cashmere, but it's in there. <laughs> it's a long fiber. Then we have some of the cashmere. My son-in-law uh, was one of the first ones to work with cashmere in Texas with Brian Schutz in, in, up in Colorado. And, and his main point, what he had been taught was On the tip, that last quarter of an inch or half an inch didn't have a wave in it, and so it wasn't good fiber. <laughs> we don't look at that. Either. I'm not saying it's not important. That I just want you to be aware of it. I don't want you to read some old literature and be so critical that you cull all of your ghosts. <laughs> we failed if, if that's what happened. This is a straight tip to the fiber. I hope you look for those things and are aware of them. And then as I mentioned earlier, and we may have some here today, you'll have the fluffy goat. Very little guard hair. You think it's very little guard hair, but it's still got guard hair in it, doesn't it, Diane? Very, very fine. But I said, boy, I've got this beautiful fiber. And say that's two inches. But you have to cut off that much because of the brown tip that's been exposed to the weather. You may not have an inch and a quarter of a fiber to work with. I still want to encourage you folks here today to, to think in terms of the real narrow crimp. You know, learn to measure it out eight or nine ways to the inch or however you want to do that. But don't get hung up on it if it's not just a masterpiece. In style, we have found it is, is very heritable. Whenever I, I've looked at lots of Borgos for cashmere, and Chris McGuire made, made our, our taxi shows not that big, but she just couldn't get over, and I'll show you a picture, not of the fiber, but of this big board cashmere that she made champion in Texas. Because whenever you do find a Borgo with cashmere, it's usually pretty darn good. Question then, Joe David? What's that? Um, on your spotted ones, is the white fiber and the brown fiber different microns? At different A lot areas? of times it is. Good question. Very good point. Oh, okay. So that is one reason for it, it's more desirable to have a solid color in them. But until you get way down the line, <laughs> and I guarantee you some people will keep the spotted goats and when they send them to market, you know, to the meat market there's some people there to buy a certain colored goat so you can develop your own specialized type of goat but i'm just talking about the cashmere don't sell a real a goat a cashmere goat just because it has a little bit of some spots on it
And we, we were trained at first that, oh no, no. Because it does slow down the starting. And Don has brought out a good point about the difference, especially on the Borgos, the difference in the micron. And the main thing is if you find a, an animal or a fleece that, that is deficient or excessive in any of those categories, you probably need to seriously think about culling that fleece. Now, I'm not talking about if you want to sort it out, you know, take the neck out and, and the bridge off. But I'm talking about evaluating the goat back home. Like these guys looked more like an Angora goat to me. They have the real long, long hair. And uh, like I said, the micron on this feels real funny. It feels more like, a, what, a nylon? Okay, let, let's just step forward and feel that briefly. <laughs> to me, this is the best way, just hands on. But let's look at this. And what I'm getting at, somebody will send, hand you a piece of wool or cotton, and you're talking about cashmere, and I honestly sometimes wouldn't know it. If I was evaluating this, I would say this is not cashmere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look on the black. Have you ever looked at, at the individual fibers on a dark? Yes. And it's fun. See the difference? Yes. See, that? there's no kink to it, mm -hmm. and, and you can see that real easy. So. Oh. And then this is the lovely ones with all of the, this had the nine inch uh, hairs left over. <laughs> Look, looky here now. I, this is from the, is it from one goat maybe? Or just this there. is a beginner, and I'm sure that uh, he put all of his together. Okay, so let, let's look here. And it, you remember I drew the picture up there of no wave at the tip. We talked about the small guard hair. We talked about the tertiary fiber. I want to say, I don't know what that is. That's bigger than the tertiary <laughs> fiber. But you see what I mean? It's just long and it's still in there. And that's why the small diameter micron guard hair is so difficult for the D hair. Okay. So we want a coarse guard hair. Then you look here and we see some real fine, you know, maybe 14, 15 micron, mm -hmm. whatever it is, but with real good style. And then you look over here and we see some that on the tip is just straight. Over here we have, in, we've had over the years, we've had two lectures or two classifiers from Australia. One would say number one is the best on style. The other one said five mm -hmm. was the top on style. Mm -hmm. So I just say good, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. medium, and four. So let's don't get, get hung up on those, numbers. those those numbers. But you see right here, the majority of this fleece has low, poor style. It's, it's just a little better than mohair, the wave. It's it's finer. Okay. But but you do see the real beautiful, stylish cashmere fiber there, and you'll see some right here, and I ought to have a pencil, or better pointer really, but you'll see some that, like right here, that just doesn't have any wave on the tip. All right. we, we see, of course, the, the big guard hair, and I, I would call this medi medium fineness, and I, I, you need to kind of do enough to get it in practice a little bit again. But see, that's just average style right here. The style on this isn't as good as you might think. Like somebody mentioned, a lot of times the finer it is, the more crimp you'll see. And yet, what I have a joy in seeing is, is a fleece from an older doe, maybe 17 microns, and have number one excellent crimp. have all been donated by 
So you, you look here now, we got three, a little sample from three fleeces. Which one appears to you to be coarser and finer? In other words, you can't just look at, you want to look at staple length, you want to look at crimp, you want to look at fineness, and then the amount of guard hair, and then the, which is yield, and then the size of the guard hair as well as debris. But I'm talking about it in evaluating that goat's fleece for your breeding records, you're not going to get it hung up on vegetation and so forth. The reason you want that crimp is cashmere shorter as a rule. Say, that's what holds it together. And it's not a strong fiber like mohair or wool. So you need that wave in there to kind of help hold it. This one's Kashgora. This one here is a, is a, has a finer guard hair. This is on the fine side of Kashgora. But, but if you look, and you just, for some of you can see better than I can, but, yeah, but you just literally got to get, you see how there's not much wave here? And it, it's pretty easy to see that fiber. And then you see the guard hair we're talking about, at least that's the desirable size, diameter guard hair. But then you see this smaller one here? That's what Diane's talking about. It's hard to get out. And over here, see, you remember the fleece we had here earlier in the sample? The guard hair just jumped out at you. This, this, I, I couldn't tell you the micron of it, but, but it, it's a relative thing. See that small guard hair? That's, and like, that would be Kemp in a goat. It just doesn't come out. This one here's a yearling, also it says. Okay. So, and you, here you want to see that this would be fine, and, and you see the, you can just feel, so to speak, the, the number one style and, and crimp there. So take a look at it, but look at that. Small guard hair. The yearling is the first fleece? The yearling would be the first one. Mm -hmm. But does everybody here see this? You, uh, nobody's picked up and really seen the length. You see, that's really getting close to, close to one inch. When you um, talk about the length, are you talking about it like when it's all like just now relaxed, or do you talk about it when it's stretched out? You, well, you can stretch it just a little bit, but but from, from a practical viewpoint, unless you're a real specialist, I would say this is on the short side. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And but no, you, you know you get a feel here that it is short, but you want to pull it out enough to where. It still has a personality. This one here is a five-year-old. Okay. And this is a five-year-old. And this, see when you're parting this, and I know I'm seeing more than y'all, but that is beautiful. That, that's still fine, and look at that number one crimp there. Now, we're worried about the length, though, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> How old is this boat? I said five. Was it? Huh? See, that length is good. That length is good. Now look, that looks like it's from a different goat, doesn't it? See, it doesn't have the character, doesn't have the style and crimp. So this is why when you're looking at a fleece, you, you, you take several samples. It's harder to grade classify cashmere than it is one or more hair. And the guard hair on that one's fine too. Mm -hmm. That's hard to remove. So yeah. it's harder so to So then you would put it out. all in the category of the lesser quality. No, no, what you would try to do, you've got to, on a commercial basis, <coughs> make a real decision about, in other words, some of you might play bridge. And so if I'm taking the time to evaluate this fleece, I want to try to get something good out of it. I want to win a trick with a deuce or trace of clubs, you know, every now and then. So what, what I'm getting at 
if you can it share in your combing time. And combing is very, very easy. I mean, you should know enough and you can, whoever's helping you or yourself, put it in the proper pile. But when you have a share there that you're paying by the head to come that day, you, you want to divide those goats up if you can before it gets there. So the more you can do at the sharing floor, the better. And that's why this, this is, is so here. important. <laughs> and, but like Diane pointed out here, see, that little old thing there is going to really give, give trouble. The point is, you pro if it's like this, you probably shouldn't be trying to get it off of the goat. Of the fleeces we've seen today, this is the one that'll make some money. You know, we've got adequate length. It's, it's certainly fine enough. It's got the crimp. Which one? The gray one? Now, what are you going to take off on this fleece, though? Yeah, fair enough. What's the, what's the undesirable? Right. See, that garden hair is real fine. Mm -hmm. That's going to give Diane trouble. And then the other thing, it may be a little tippy since there's yeah. not much garden hair there to protect it. Mm -hmm. You see that little little extra brown right there? It, but it's pretty tough. It's not some of that broke off. But we may see that on somebody's fleece, especially down from Texas. You'll see some. And even in the cold weather, it can get weathered. This is a good one.